Hey there riders, Motojourno Chris here and I thought I'd talk about Yamaha's R15 version 3 as an alternative to the Honda Grom, perhaps even as the Grom killer, to get really clickbaity and draw the ire of all those Grom riders. With these motorcycles priced within a few hundred dollars of each other here in Australia, they do seem like there'd be some competition between the two models. Honda's Grom has done exceptionally well because it captures the imagination of people and riders as basically an adult sized fun bike with quirky styling and a cool character, super simple performance and a platform which has a lot to offer when it comes to aftermarket support. The Grom also has a 760mm seat height which is reasonably low if not at cruiser level and weighs in at a super light 104 kilos wet fueled and ready to go. This makes for an ideal option for those thinking of an easy starting machine, but with just 10 horsepower on tap, power is quite limited as is top speed. Likewise, specs are basic from the brakes to the suspension to the limitations of those 12 inch wheels. Of course, most of the limitations of the Grom are just part of the appeal, so it's hard to be too critical, but is the Grom a strong long-term all-round bike choice? Enter the Yamaha YZF R15 version 3. In a way, we are comparing apples and oranges. The R15 is styled after a real supersport machine or racer, and while being just a 155cc model, the performance is absolutely maximised, offering almost double the horsepower of the Grom. Now that doesn't come without a cost, Weight is up to 138 kilos as well, while we're seeing proper full-size 17-inch wheels front and rear, and a much taller seat height at 815 millimeters, which will probably turn some riders off the idea of the R15. But those full-size wheels and a change in rear rim size on the version 3 do ensure a much wider range of tire options are available to you as a rider. Rather than the almost toy-like proportions of the Grom, you do get much closer to a full-size bike feel with proper drop-down clip-on handlebars as well as the wind protection from a fairing too. Now, to some riders that may actually count against the R15 in this comparison, but I guess that just comes down to what you're after. Apart from offering a lot more performance, the R15 also runs a variable valve actuation system, which put simply ensures a wider range of torque and power is available through the rev range, and it's just a lot more high tech than the little Grom's air-cooled single. The R15 is also a liquid-cooled single and runs a six-speed gearbox plus slipper clutch. On the Grom, you get a four-speed gearbox, but better fuel economy, Although both bikes are so miserly on fuel, it probably wouldn't be a huge point of comparison to most riders. The R15 also offers 41mm forks, but not upside down items as seen on the Grom in a 31mm item. But these are fairly beefy all the same for a small capacity machine, while both of these bikes run monoshocks. Both bikes also run single disc brakes front and rear, but the 12 inch wheels on the Grom are a limiting factor here when it comes to rotor size and the R15 runs a larger 282mm front rotor and a 220mm rear as a result. Now clearly the R15 holds a pretty reasonable advantage when it comes to specification and performance over the Grom, even if the Honda does have a reputation for reliability which extends to this model. The Grom on the other hand has a pretty insurmountable amount of aftermarket accessories and support which encompasses everything up to big ball kits with a reputation as being a super simple machine to work on even for those with basically no experience. That extends to some pretty cool customizations too whether that's adventure Groms, stretch Groms or cool lower fairing kits which really sharpen up the styling. I think I even saw on social media a Grom which had a Ducati engine in it just to tell you how extreme some people are going. I think where the R15 stands out, however, is in the fact that it offers performance capable of all road conditions, where the Grom realistically is not a machine you'd want to ride on the freeway. It's been a while since I rode one, but the small wheels and top speed are just not suited to this, and the bike I rode over red speed to a pretty crazy margin, which certainly makes the bike seem faster than it is, but is a bit deceptive when every vehicle on the highway overtakes you with a big margin of speed. And sure, not everyone needs that performance on a second runaround bike or a city only commuter, 
So to be fair, the Grom will do it all below 100 kilometers per hour. But the big advantage of the R15 is that you can pick up a motorcycle which shares some of these themes from the Grom. It's light, it has a small capacity engine. It's definitely all about the rider with no mod cons. Handling is light and sharp, parking is easy, and it's not a huge investment. It makes for an ideal extra motorcycle or a starter machine. Then you get a much higher level of performance and a top speed which means not only cruising on the freeway is possible, but also that overtaking isn't a chore. Bigger wheels are also more suited to higher speeds and better suspension and brakes can take full advantage of the bike's light weight. I also reckon it's more comfortable, although I am used to sports bikes, so I really enjoy that more aggressive ergonomic, even if you only can see your elbows in the mirrors. While I'd say the R15 also caters to larger riders, even more so than something like the MT-03, which I rode after having the R15. Now, is the R15 likely to really compete with the Grom? Let's be honest, probably not to a large extent. The Grom, with all its limitations, captures people's imagination and that sense of fun. The R15 version 3 in comparison is a far more serious offering and I think it could be the ideal alternative for those who can't quite get past the Grom's cons or need a little more for their daily duties or maybe even want to upgrade from a Grom without having to jump up to a 250cc machine. Will the R15 be for everyone? Certainly not, but then neither is the Grom, and if I were in the market for one of these new, I couldn't go past the R15 V3. And there's only a $200 difference on the on-road prices for them locally, for me, if you're looking at current 2020 models. That said, you can get a $400 discount off a 2018 or earlier brand new Grom, which does bring that price down a fair amount, although that's an Australian offer. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the new R15 versus Honda's Grom, and I'm sure this will have ruffled some feathers, as Groms do have quite the cult following. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is the appeal of the Grom less about performance and specs, or even value, and something a bit more special? Or does the R15 look like the better all-round choice to you? If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to sub and hit that notification bell. Like or comment, and as always, stay safe out there, whether you're on a Grom or a Kawasaki H2. Thanks for watching.